Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is differential equations. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the technique of separation of variables. Our requirement reads, find a general solution to the differential equation, quantity 1 plus x to the power of 2, dy over dx, equals x tangent y. In contrast to solving a regular algebra equation, when we solve a differential equation, we're expecting a function as a solution. In this case, as we see the term dy over dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, our solution is going to be a function in terms of x. y equals some function in terms of x, and the general solution indicates that we expect some form of a constant of integration in that function. Now following the general form that we see at the top of the screen, we want to manipulate our differential equation so that we have dy over dx on one side of the equation and the product of the x function and the y function on the right side of the equation. From there we will separate the variables into two terms of integration. We'll have the integral of the y function with respect to y on the left side of the equation and the integral of the x function with respect to x on the right side of the equation. And from there, we'll integrate both sides of the equation and simplify. Let's go to the algorithm. Step 1, set up differential equation. In our case, the differential equation is already set up. In some problems, you'll be given a word problem, and you'll need to translate that word problem into a differential equation. In our case, we will, in step 1, manipulate the differential equation into the form that we're looking for, dy over dx on the left side of the equation, equals, in order to isolate dy over dx, what we'll do is divide both sides by 1 plus x squared. So on the right, we'll have x tangent y divided by 1 plus x squared. And now I'll manipulate the right side of the equation so we clearly see the product of the x function and the y function. The x function x over 1 plus x squared, and the y function tangent y. Now step 2, separate variables. Looking at our general rule, we're going to end up with the integral of 1 over the y function, which is tangent y with respect to y, equals the integral of the x function, x over 1 plus x squared, with respect to x. To keep the procedure of this rule in mind, notice what we've done algebraically. We've divided both sides by tangent y, thus the tangent y disappears from the right. It shows as the denominator of a fraction on the left, and although it's not exactly what's happening, you can think of multiplying both sides by dx. dy over dx on the left side of the equation, not exactly a fraction, but think of it as a fraction. If you were to multiply by dx, the dx would disappear, and multiplying the right side as well by dx causes the dx to show up on the right side of the equation. Again, that's not mathematically exactly what's happening, but that will help you to accurately work through the process of separation of variables. Now before integration, one final algebraic manipulation on the left side of the equation. I'm going to show that 1 over tangent y is cotangent y. So we'll take the integral of cotangent y with respect to y. And on the right side of the equation, I want to observe that we have a fraction with the derivative of a function in the numerator, the original function in the denominator, with one slight adjustment. What would be the exact derivative of the denominator would be 2x. 2x over 1 plus x squared isn't what we have, but I want 2x in the numerator, so to offset that multiple of 2, will divide outside of the integral by one-half, and the right side of the equation is now one-half times the integral of 2x over 1 plus x squared with respect to x. Step 3, apply integration rules. The integral of cotangent y 
and if you don't know this integral you can find this in the formula book is the natural log of the absolute value of sine y which equals one-half times the integral of 2x over 1 plus x squared is the integral of a derivative over its function which will be the natural log of the absolute value of the original function which is the expression that we find in the denominator 1 plus x squared and here we'll add on our constant of integration plus c so this is step 3 and step 4 step 5 simplification no change on the left side of the equation natural log of the absolute value of sine y equals on the right side of the equation we will move the coefficient of the natural log term to the exponent of the argument of the natural log term the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x squared to the power of 1 half and now we're going to change the plus c before I make that change let's think about what plus c is it's some constant value whether it's 1 half c or 2 c or c squared or the square root of c or the natural log of c it's simply a constant in order to simplify the right side of the equation we're going to change the constant from c to the natural log of c so in order to distinguish between my first iteration and my second iteration I'm going to reference the first constant of integration in step 3 as c1 and in step 5 I will change that constant to the natural log of c and I'll reference this value as c2 both of these values c1 and the natural log of c2 are simply unknown constants but the natural log form is going to enable us to greatly simplify this equation on the left side of the equation we have one natural log term on the right side of the equation we have a natural log term and now a second natural log term adding two natural log terms allows us to manipulate to the multiplication of one natural log term we'll combine those two arguments into the natural log of multiplying the arguments c2 times the square root of 1 plus x squared the left side of the equation remains the natural log of the absolute value of sine y and now that both sides of the equation are natural log terms we can drop the log component and simply keep the arguments the left side of the equation is sine y equals the right side of the equation is c2 times the square root of 1 plus x squared and this is our final answer changing the equation to y equals the inverse sine of the expression on the right side of the equation doesn't create any additional simplification we'll keep this form notice that we do have a constant of integration on the right side of the equation instead of plus c we're multiplying by c which means that whatever the square root of 1 plus x squared is we could multiply that by any constant value and the right side of the equation will equal sine y in other words there are an infinite number of possibilities on the right side of the equation when we're finding the general solution to a differential equation we're not finding one function we're finding a family of functions that family is represented by the constant of integration in our case c the multiple of the square root of 1 plus x squared notice that we aren't given initial conditions in this example so we didn't complete algorithm step 6 if we're given initial conditions then instead of finding a family of functions as the solution we find a particular function as the solution and we'll look at the concept of using initial conditions to find a particular solution of a differential equation in our next lesson